Hi, I'm Duncan Jarman and today I've come to one of my favourite venues at this time of year, Badshot League Big Pond run by Farnham Angling Society. It's still, still cold, we're just into spring, although it does feel quite wintry. The days are getting longer, the actual air temperature is slightly warmer. We've got a nice westerly wind, which is good. The only drawback is I wasn't able to get here till midday and that's normally a time, a real lull in the action, so I'm not expecting anything for a couple of hours. The target species today is bream, um, you know, quite good bream, up to sort of six, seven pound, and the, tar you know, the tactics I'm gonna be using is, as I've publicized so much, devastating helicopter rig. So uh, keep watching and I'll uh, show you a few tricks during the day. That was straight after a recast, obviously, maggot sandwich has worked, it's just hit the bottom the maggots have exploded and at long last the first of many bream I'm hoping to have uh, picked up my bait. I've noticed as well a guy on the opposite side hasn't caught anything a match angler and he's just actually landed a fish as well so let's hope that the actual uh, switch has been hit and uh, they're going to turn on. There you have it, you can see the helicopter rig. And that hook is actually in the side of the mouth, which isn't the perfect position. You'd want it in the bottom lip. So, a little, quite a small one for here. Lovely colours. Hopefully there'll be a bigger one soon. Just run through the bait that I'm using for the session. I'm using the key stick mix by Nash, but any good fish meal ground bait will do. Obviously, just get a big bucket, pour it contents in the bucket. Don't mix a whole bag up because if you mix it up too stodgily, you're just going to waste it. So just mix a little bit up and then just you know continue doing that throughout the session. I've got here. Good old dead maggots, bream love dead maggots and on, their, on the day on the hook and they can be devastating. So just chuck some dead maggots in there. Not too many because you don't, you know, want too many kind of like hook bait samples in there. And then I've got some hemp oil. All I'm going to do is just tip a little bit of that in. It just gets a nice slick on the surface and down, you know, lots of attractants in the water. And then very important here, give it a good mix and then just add some water but be very very you know sparingly on the water just a little bit because you don't want this stodgy you want it relatively dry it only takes a few seconds then it'll dry out and then you know when it dries out just add a little bit more lake water is better than tap water good stir get it all going and really what you want is it you know just so you can actually ball it in like that. But obviously I'm gonna be putting this in the feeder. And on the hook, I'll try one rod at the start with dead maggot and one with live maggots. Three live on one and two dead on the other. Red maggots, a little bit of turmeric on those. And obviously, just get the feeder, I'm just gonna plug some live maggots in between two sort of plugs of ground bait, cage feeder and just keep casting every sort of 15 minutes or so until the fish arrive. Let's just explain the helicopter rig. Tied to the main line here is a one ounce cage feeder and then about three inches up, two float stops. And in between the float stop, there's a small swivel and a little rig sleeve. And then your hook link is trapped there, tied onto the swivel. And it's all it is, is about three inches of five pound fluorocarbon down to a size 16 super specialist hook. The hook I've tied on knotless knot style, it used to just tie it on by a six turn grinner, but obviously ever since putting on 
knotless knot style, the hook holds are so much better, especially when tench fishing. Obviously you've got to keep those two little beads trapped there. A lot of people forget about this and they don't pay enough attention to detail and they find that this is all moving. So just make sure that you trap that down and the ideal position on your main line is when you actually bend that hook link down it just comes above that swivel and this feeder. If you pull that right down it gets tangled in this feeder. If you put it up there it's a million miles away from your actual free bait. And then what we do on here is I just put three, three red maggots and I actually put my maggots on in the fin end. Some noisy geese, it's that time of year. One, two, three, and there you have it. And this is how the actual rig works. I just lay that on my knee. You can imagine this is just laying on the actual lake bed. And what happens is all your maggots that are trapped in the ground bait there disperse, a bream, a tench, a carp comes along, picks up, the, sucks those maggots up and then just lifts and as it lifts it tightens, if it moves away from the feeder, the feeder just sets a hook in the bottom lip as you can see that hooks in my finger and if it pulls away from the rod tip, the actual tight line and it's very important to use a tight line, just sets a hook in the bottom lip. So you know when you're actually fishing effectively because most of the fish you catch are right in the bottom lip. And then with the actual feeder, all I do is I just put a little plug of ground bait, about 20 maggots, and basically just plug the maggots in the ground bait. Obviously when you're casting, you've got to work really quick because those maggots are going to push that ground bait out. And as you can see, that ground bait's quite dry. You don't want it really stodgy. It, you know, it just take longer to come out. So just quite dry ground bait, just enough to plug a few maggots in and just keep casting that, all clipped up, you know, every 15 minutes and eventually the broom will turn up. levels are so so much better it just screams fish now but all in all it's been a really tough afternoon I would say we've still got the best sort of time to come the next hour before it gets dark but it's really fished under par saying that I've only seen one other fish caught since we've been here and there's been a few kind of match anglers so you know this is the third bream so I can't be really too disappointed another day when it fishes really well you catch 22 brings you know well over a hundred pound of fish hopefully there'll be going to be a few more be nice to see where the hook is there we are that's more like where the hook should be in the bottom lip I would hope, like to have it perfectly central, but there it is. Bit of a better fish, probably getting on for five pound plus that one.
can see, we've sat here all day struggling for bites. And then once that light level goes and the triggers hit and the, the, you know, they decide to feed, there's one in the net and there's one on this rod. So it just shows you, you know, you just have to have confidence in what you're doing. There's nothing wrong with the rigs. Caught hundreds of fish doing this here. As I say, if they're not feeding, you won't catch them. You just have to keep going through the motions and just be patient, really. And midday, you know, if you if you get up in the morning, you have your egg and bacon, read the newspaper and get here at 10, and you leave at four, then, well, the chances are you're gonna catch very little. But if you get here, at four and you fish till seven this time of year when it gets dark at seven you're going to catch plenty something's very important i've been here since midday struggled for kind of like three fish up till now and then all of a sudden two, you know, a rod's just gone, I'm playing the fish. As I'm landing one, the other rod's gone. I've got both of them in the landing net. I'll show you those in a minute. But the first thing to do is get the rods back out and working for you because, you know, we've been here all day struggling. They're now feeding. Most important thing to do, get the rods back out. Fish are fine, they're in the landing net, they're in the water, they're safe. I'll go and show you them now. Two at once, a couple of nice bream, probably five and a half pound a piece, both at the same time. Get them in the landing net, unhook them. There they are. More importantly, get those rods back out. So, tough day, but a rewarding day. I've had to work at it today, but five, you know, quality bream on a difficult day. Another day you get 20 of these, so uh, well happy. These are the days you learn a lot when you have to work at it. Let's get these two back. 